So, a man of miracles in the 1900s. I know when I was a Protestant and I heard of Padre Pio and all the things he had done, someone gave me a book about it. I was like, this is incredible. This is either all lies or this pretty much proves that Catholicism is true. It, I wouldn't say it was a major influence in my conversion, but it definitely cracked uh, my, my outer wall to Catholicism. And today I've got the joyful Ray Grijalba, and uh, he's going to talk to us about some of the miracles of Padre Pio. Today, of course, is his Saints Day, so uh, we're, we're kind of throwing this together, but it's going to be a great show. Great. Uh, Ray is always well-researched. He's got high energy. He's joyful. He's fun, and he's going to go through some of the miracles uh, of the great Saint Pio. Right. Welcome aboard. Yeah, thanks. To, it's great to be on. And the, the unique thing about this video is that you're not just going to hear from what Ray said. Uh, I have a good friend, Angelo, whose godfather was Padre Pio's assistant for 25 years. So a lot, these stories were all validated by him. He was born and raised in San Giovanni Rotundo. And uh, we'll go into it in a little little bit. So That's it's going to be exciting. It's going to be cool. It's going to be very cool. All right, yes. well, we're going to open up. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father in Latin. And uh, Ray, you're going to play the second half, right? Yep. All right, here we go. Oremus. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater noster, qui es in celi, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Panum nostrum, quotidianum de nobis odie, et imite nobis de vita nostra, sicut et nos dimitibus de vitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Amen. Almighty God, we ask that you would please bless us by the intercession and merits of St. Pio. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Nomine Patris et Fidii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, Ray, well, happy feast day of St. Pio. Yes. Hopefully he's, he's listening to us now and praying for us. Tell us about the miracles of Pio. Of course, he had the stigmata, which is a big deal. He's the first priest ever to have the stigmata in his hands and in his feet, but what else? So he had uh, five unique, uh, well, I had more than five, but five that I went into in this shorter video, uh, miracles, graces that he'd received from God, and we're going to go into each one of those, but the one that's most commonly known is that he could read the sins on a soul. So when someone would go to confession, he knew what their sins were, and there were several times where he said, you forgot a sin, and uh, Taylor's going to pull up one of those videos from that clip, and uh, this was pretty impressive to see. Great. Let me just set that up. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's the video. This is from Ray's YouTube channel. Y'all should all go subscribe to Ray's channel. It's called The Joy of the Faith. I always forget to say Joy of the Faith because there's only one uh, faith. Exactly. That's why exactly. I said the, the faith. you know. Yeah. All right, well, here, <laughs> here it goes. Him to pray for his father. His father was healed, and he visited Padre Peter to thank him. Here's what he said. When he saw me, he said, Well, your father's all right then. Well, this shattered me, really, because I'd never been down in San Giovanni Rotondo before. I'd never been down that part of the world. Neither did I know anyone down there. I posed in my mind a question to him. I was saying, Was it you? Was it you? And he replied, In the dream. In the dream. Well, I started shaking. I was scared stiff to tell you the truth. I said, yes, Father, in the dream, Father. I told him my, my sins and he, before he gave me absolution, he said to me, now then, there is something else, you know. I says, well, Father, I said, I can't remember anything else. Padre Pio then described an incident with a girl in the park when he first joined the army. I was so embarrassed. Oh dear. I said, yes, Father, it all comes back to me and I'm, I'm afraid I forgot to tell it in confession. I'm so ashamed. Well, he said, you've been carrying this sin around with you, he says, ever since 1941. And the place was Blackburn. Here we see that Padre Pio's prayers helped his dad heal. He knew that he was in this man's dream. And... He knew the details of this man's sin and that it had been from 1941 and in the city that it occurred in. That is pretty supernatural. Now, another story that's very popular with Padre Pio knowing okay. someone's sins is... Wow. 
I mean, yeah, so, wow. I know. You imagine going to confession and a sin that you forgot from, I mean, I guess probably at least 30 years at that time right. was brought up by the priest. I mean, just amazing, this gift that he had, this uh, this great grace that God gave. And, you know, when you look at it from a scriptural perspective, we see Peter with Ananias and Sapphira, and he knew that mm -hmm. he said that you've given your heart over to Satan. How did he know that? He read his heart in that moment. So, and obviously Jesus knows sins and he can give grace as he wants. So that was a really amazing story that was documented from the actual man. You saw the picture of him with Padre Pio. And I thought that was a really great one to share. Yeah, now, that's amazing. Can you imagine, can you just imagine? And and the guy was actually a little bit in good faith. He's like, no, I can't remember one. And he says, no, it was back in 1941. He knew the year, he knew the place, he knew everything. <laughs> It's supernatural, yeah. folks. I mean, if you're not a Catholic, there's a lot of people who aren't Catholic who watch this channel, by the way, Ray. Yes. Just just hearing that, you have to realize that that's a supernatural gift that comes mm -hmm. from God. It is. And, you know, it's it's really, it, it pulls together the supernatural, right? We say that God is the creator of all things visible and invisible. Yep. There's this angelic realm that we have no ability to see, but he was very close to the Zanji, which we'll get into in a little bit, but that was obviously what helped him in that. But uh, one thing that I didn't know if was clear for those viewers out there is this man had a dream that Padre P was, you know, in the dream with him, and he said, hey, can you pray for my dad? And then his dad was healed. And then when he saw him, he said, were you the one in the dream? And he said, or were you, were you the priest? And he said, yeah, in the dream. So amazing yeah. to, to tie all that together. I thought that was so profound. So another one that this one's pretty popular and was verified by Angelo was uh, this woman. She went to confession to Padre Pio and, and he said, there's a sin that you're not truly sorrowful for that you're not stating. And she said, I think I've said everything. He said, no, get out. I'm not giving you absolution. Go say a rosary. So that's pretty harsh, right? Um, wow. We'll get into that in a second. She comes back again and he says, no, get out. You need to. And he would say basta, right? Enough. Basta, just get out. Basta. And then she came back the third time. And by that time, she was pretty frustrated. And he said, just close your eyes. And she closed her eyes. And he said, what do you see? And she said, I see uh, a pope and Jesus, but I don't know who this pope is. And he said, that would have been your son if you didn't abort him. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. I know. Maybe, so that, always... maybe that was Pope Pius XIII that we need right oh, now. Oh, man. Yes, that was a great episode. Right, Taylor? You guys got to check out the Pius the 13th episode oh. <laughs> of holy memory, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yes. So that's the thing we don't realize with abortion that, mm -hmm. you know, I guess there's that famous phrase that Mother Teresa, someone said to Mother Teresa, why isn't God cured cancer? And she said he did, but you aborted him, you know? Yeah, right. So there's all of this opportunity that is lost. And obviously, as you said last week in a video, you know, confession is, is a gift for us to be forgiven of yeah. that. But it was crazy that she'd forgotten a sin so great. How is that? And, How is that, though? Well, you know, it's almost like today where it's what well, obviously it was, you know, decades ago that this happened. But when it becomes so cultural and you're in that moment, I guess you you become desensitized in a way. Yeah. Uh, Angelo said that Padre Pio said it was a double murder because they killed both the child and it really like killed her soul and desensitizing her. Yeah. But a lot of the, the friars came to him and said, why are you so harsh with this lady? Because I guess that news had spread. Oh, had spread. Wow. And he said, the Holy Spirit told me that she needed to be dealt with in a harsh manner. Huh. Otherwise, she wouldn't have known. Because we know, like both you and I, yeah. the, the best confessor I've ever had is a fraternity priest. And he is a very intense priest. But in the confessional, he's like a lamb. And that that has really helped me. But when, when people can tell or when priests can tell that someone's not truly contrite, mm -hmm. they need to be, you know, to... Yep. To not be, uh, or to maybe go a different route. So obviously, yeah. you and I aren't priests, so we don't we don't know all that. But those priests watching, I'm sure uh, you've you've probably been in a situation like that. But again, a great grace and uh, something that was really profound to hear from Angelo. Yeah. So another thing that he was and can, very for people well just joining us. I'm sorry to interrupt, but can you say again who Angelo is? Because I think that's really important to this conversation. Yes. So Angelo, and actually, I'll I'll, I'll announce that surprise. Okay. Either. Okay. Great so opportunity. It's, it's amazing how God works. We'll go into it in more detail later, uh, like in a different video or something like that, maybe. But Angelo is a, a guy that reached out to me and said, Ray, I want to make a documentary on Eucharistic miracles, like a professional movie. We're going to travel around the world, things like that. So that's coming our way 
Uh, it's going to be funded through the Christian channel. So promo code Jesus. It's going to be uh, really amazing. It's, I mean, it's just so incredible that he reached out and then another guy reached out from the Christian channel, Austin. And uh, so we're building this partnership. This is the first time we've announced this and uh, it's going awesome. to be, it's going to be huge because we did that Eucharistic miracle video a couple uh, days ago. And I was just going to say, if you haven't seen the Eucharistic video that Ray put together on his channel and in the interview that we did on Eucharistic miracles, please go watch both of those are excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. So Angelo was talking to me and he's like, oh yeah, my godfather was Padre Pio's assistant for 25 years. And I was like, what? Because you could tell he's got a, a pretty thick Italian accent. Uh -huh. He's from San Giovanni Rotundo. So that's who Angelo is. He was wow. raised by this man who spent 25 years with Padre Pio. There's actually a plaque outside of Padre Pio's room to this day that states this. Padre Pio, or Father, Father Pio said, this is my deputy and woe to anyone who will touch him. <laughs> whoa i like that i know i know we love the world man exactly so uh padre pio was definitely a scriptural don't get man. cross with that guy ray don't get cross <laughs> i know i know so it's, it's a great blessing we've actually been saying a novena so okay eucharistic miracles coming soon Fantastic. uh well sometime next year so if you want to maybe a pio go. movie too uh that is that who, may be in the works who knows so. yeah Get, uh, get Jim Caviezel on that or something like that. So, yes. So that's who Angelo is. And he we did an interview, a 30-minute interview on my channel talking through all of these. Now, this is a story that he shared with me from his godfather that I'd never heard before. And this is on bilocation. So for those that might not know, bilocating is being in two places at the same time. And we know that that is physically impossible, but for God, all things are possible, Right. So this, this story is uh, pretty amazing. Padre Pio was suppressed by his superiors. He couldn't say mass publicly, things like that. And they were in Rome making the decision. The Holy Father was making the decision on whether to continue to, suppre to, continue to suppress him. And uh, all of a sudden the door opened and this monk walked in. And he kneeled before the Pope and said, please don't do this. And then he left. They went to the guards and they said, we, we never saw a monk. And they called the you know, the monastery in San Giovanni Rotundo. And they said, yeah, Padre Pio was saying Vespers with all the other friars at that time. Wow. So there's no way he could have walked that way. He was okay. present in both of those yep. locations at the same time. And that mm -hmm. is one of the things that led to him not being suppressed and being able to uh, resume public ministry. Yeah, because a lot of people don't, may not know this, that Padre Pio himself was um, not allowed to hear confessions and was not allowed to say mass in public um, by Pope Paul VI. He was uh, he was uh, under. He wasn't. I don't think he was um, suspended. I don't think that's the right word. But I think he was restricted. Do you know the the right language, Ray? I don't know. Yeah. No. But, but it's amazing to think that he was able to use this grace from God to uh, help foster again devotion and. Uh, and uh, love of Christ through him. So that's amazing to think that that happened. I'd never heard that story before. I don't know if you've heard that before, Taylor, but. I haven't. I've heard, I've heard a couple others. Uh, I went to San Giovanni Rotundo where he's buried. You can see his body. Have you been there, Ray? I have, yes. Yeah. And um, a lot of people think it's incorrupt, but it's actually not. Did you know that? I, I kind of knew it. I don't know the details, though. Yeah, because if you see his hands, I mean, there's there's flesh on the bones, but it doesn't look like these hands. But yeah. there is like a mask um, over his face. And a lot of people think that is his actual face, but it's not. It's a death mask. Mm. Just a, a clarification. But, you know, it's a great place to go and, and to pray. And, you know, I know myself and our family, we were, you know, deeply impressed just being there by the tomb of Pio. And they have a, a way it's, you know, the church is um, set up. It's kind of like uh, Our Lady Guadalupe, you know, where there's lots mm -hmm. of access and, and visibility. Uh, to his body, but yeah, it's just really awesome. If you ever get a chance to go to Italy, go to San Giovanni Rotundo and and check it out. The church is a little modern. I wasn't yeah, a fan I of didn't, that. I didn't actually go in the church. Uh, we got there right after it locked. I was so bummed because oh. he's my favorite saint. We literally missed it by like three minutes. And I was like, oh man. So when I was talking to Angelo, he was like, oh man, if you would have known me, I could have, you know, called someone for you. Yeah. Oh <laughs> but, man. That's uh, a, so you didn't see, you didn't get to see him. Nah. It was. I was so sad because San Giovanni Rotundo is far from Rome. It we did really a road trip is. just to go see him. Yeah, it's and, on the uh, uh, the east east side of Italy. Yes. Yeah. So even more amazing with that bilocation that it was so far right. away. 
Yeah. So one of the uh, and the, the confessional from Padre Pio is still there, which is really great to see. It's like confessional PPO. So wow. that to think all those souls that went to confession, I was like, man, I'm in the footsteps of saints, literally. So yep. now one of the one of the uh, unique miracles that just happened to Angelo's godfather was a. Uh, <laughs> It, it's more mystical in that he uh, assigned Padre Pio assigned his godfather to wear this belt with like little metal, uh, not really prongs in it, uh, just to cause uncomfort, not to not to cut him or anything like okay. that. So he went home and uh, his wife saw him wearing it and she was very upset. She was like, what does Padre Pio have you up to now and all this stuff? So he took it off. And the next day he uh, went you know, to see Padre Pio. And before he said anything, Padre Pio said, take it off. I don't want you to wear it. I heard all that your wife said all night. You know, this was uh, keeping me up. Right. Wow. <laughs> so, yes. Isn't that incredible? That's amazing. That's amazing. I know. So it's funny to see even kind of the sense of humor in that. Right. That yes. he was like, no, you know. That, yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's good. That's it good. It is. And that's the and kind of story is... that you'd only hear via Angelo, probably. Exactly. Because yeah. it literally happened to, to that man and that man only. Yeah. So Angelo's parents actually knew Padre Pio. His, da his dad more. So it's amazing to see this connection. But one of the things, uh, one of the stories that, again, you'll never hear anywhere else, but Angelo actually personally attested to this was there was a scab that fell from his hand, you know, from the stigmata. Mm. And uh, his godfather was with him and he said, what should I do with this? And Padre Pio was like, just throw it in the trash, just throw it in the trash. He didn't want to, you know, bring all this attention to right. himself. And he said, no, I want to keep it. And he said, okay, fine. But when you die, that, that scab will go away. Like it'll disappear. So isn't that crazy, Taylor? Wow. And did it? So I'll get to it. Okay. They, they, he framed it in his, his bedroom. There were like seven rows of staples holding it in so that no one could take it or whatever. And Angelo, as a kid, would go to the bathroom and like sneak away to see this relic of Padre Pio, you know, the scab of Padre Pio. So that was always a memory that he fondly cherished. And uh, when his godfather died, that morning, the scab had shrunk in size before the funeral. And then after the funeral, it was completely gone. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it is uh, amazing to think what God can do. And, and you hear these stories of Padre Pio being able to, uh, I don't want to say like tell the future because that's like fortune teller, whatever, right. but he was given prophecy. the vision. Yeah. The prophecy, prophecy. you know? Yeah. So uh, we hear stories of the, there were these two soldiers that went to Padre Pio and one of them said, am I called to be a priest? And he said, no, you're not called to be a priest, but that guy is. And he wasn't even <laughs> discerning the priesthood. He ended up becoming a priest, you know? That's amazing. So all these, I mean, there's amazing stories. I'm sure many of the viewers could attest to uh, the yeah. stories that they've heard. But it's great to hear that from, you know, the secondhand voice of Angelo. So right. another thing that he was well known for was speaking in languages that he didn't know. Yes. So what language do you think Padre Pio would know, Taylor? Oh, well, Italian is what he was his mother tongue. Yes. And what's your favorite language? My favorite. Well, Latin. He said mass in Latin. Yes. Padre Pio only ever said mass in Latin. Exactly. Which we're going to get to in, in just a second. Mm -hmm. So he spoke Italian and Latin. And uh, but he was known or there were several times that they were coming. The Americans were coming to bomb San Giovanni Rotondo. And this is during the World Wars. And th there was this monk in the sky telling yes. them to turn around and to leave and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah, he's biolocating in the sky. Yeah, I've heard about that incredible? one. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. So that is a well-known story, uh, you know, spoken of in many places. But the cool thing mm -hmm. is, and when I was speaking with Angelo, he said, people say that Padre Pio asked for a dispensation to not say the new mass because he was old and couldn't learn it. But here he was given the gift I guess of tongues to, to, to do that. He surely could have learned right. the new mass, but he really loved the extraordinary form, which I'm sure with his mystical abilities, it would be a, uh, it would be a severe blow to have to, you know, to, to abandon that, I guess. Yeah. He, he died in 68. And just so people understand the timeline, the Novus Ordo mass was came out in 69. It was promulgated in throughout the world in 1970. And Pio died in 68. So fortunately, St. Pio never saw the Novus Ordo. He heard about it. He didn't like it. Uh, he did ask, you know, he not be allowed. He also was losing his eyesight. That's another reason uh, for it. But uh, 
technically, you know, some people say he was dispensed and didn't have to say it didn't technically exist. But by 65, they were already doing preliminary changes that would have already been happening. In fact, if you watch his last mass, it's versus popular. Have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it. Yeah. So they're it already creeping unique. it in. Yeah, and, and Taylor, I must say, it is very interesting how the, every picture of Padre Pio is him turning around. Yes. Right. Yes. And it's like just it, it almost creates the illusion that he said mass versus right. Populum. But yeah. that was just the turning around that, that you was, do five times, you know, like you say. Five, you so, know why it's five times, Ray? The wounds of Christ. Uh, the wounds of Christ. And then also um, Thomas Aquinas says that Christ in the Gospels appeared five times to his apostles manifested himself five times after the resurrection in the Gospels. And so the priest faces the people five times to signify that mystical reality. Amazing. That mass is so cool. It is so cool. It's too it's too cool for school, right, Taylor? It's, too, it's But not too cool for scholastics. <laughs> Scola. True, true. Yeah. Awesome. So, so um, did we hit all another, four? Uh, one more. Okay, I thought uh, there was one more. Spiritual warfare. He, okay. uh, Angelo's godfather tested this. We often hear of him getting beaten up by the devil and things like that. Many mm -hmm. people are surely skeptical of that. But there's one. there was one day that Angelo's godfather was with him and Padre Pio, they were leaving his cell, but the door slammed on him and they heard him getting beaten with chains. So all the friars tried to open the door so that they could, you know, save him from this. Uh, but no one could budge. Sure enough, once the beating was over, they opened the door. Padre Pio was on the ground bleeding all over the place from being beaten with chains. Mm. Uh, but they, they couldn't find the chains. Okay. So, and, and the unique thing is, is that he said afterwards, even after this great beating, he had joy in saying that his angel was standing there chanting while he was being beaten by Satan, essentially. And he told his angel, he said, next time, if you keep chanting, when I get to heaven, I'm going to beat you so bad. <laughs> and the angel never <laughs> did that again. He's like, Hey man, you got to get my bat. Exactly. Yeah. You got to have my six. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Have my six in this thing. So. Yes, that's fantastic. So those are the five. Uh, it's it's really amazing to think that we've been blessed really with a modern saint that had these great miracles and uh, hope I mean, we'll encourage you to foster a devotion to him. It's he's definitely the most miraculous miracle working saint of our era. And what's amazing about him is this is a saint who is photographed and videoed, mm. you know, I mean, yes, it's one thing to look at a holy card of, you know, St. Anthony of Padua who, by the way, I learned this from the Franciscans, was rather heavy when he died. Big. You know, we think of Thomas Aquinas as big, but apparently Anthony of Padua was big. But in the holy cards, they don't make them that way. They make them thin. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, this is a guy you can't you can't fake his holy card. There's a picture of him right there on the screen. That's him. Exactly. I love these wearing Tonger, too. we got to bring back the Tonger. we got to bring back the minor orders. we got to bring back the Tonger. The Tonger's cool. When you see like Dominicans or Franciscans with the old school Tonger. Cool stuff. It's legit. It's legit. Yeah. Uh, what's a good book? You know, people are interested now in P.O. They're like, whoa, this mm. is cool. You know, you don't see the comments, but I do. Wh where can we point people? I had a great book that I read many years ago. I don't have it with me and I've forgotten the author. I think it was just called like Padre P.O. Miracle Worker or something like that. Do you have a, yeah. a book that you would recommend that's like a good 101 on P.O.? I don't off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, I could uh, I could find out and send it to you, and then you can tweet it out so people can see that. But sure. I don't know, uh, you know, just off the top of my head. But I I have heard that tonight EWTN is putting out a video on his canonization miracles. Oh, fantastic! So kind of like I did with Eucharistic miracles, more mm -hmm. science based, and looking at newsletter or newspapers and things like that. So I don't know what time that is tonight, but okay, everyone. I mean. So, a comment that Angelo made was he was amazed that people in America had devotion to Padre Pio because San Giovanni Rotundo is a very little city. Yes, it is in Italy, and and he thought that he was like this is my saint, and, and we're coming over here, and everyone everyone loves him. So I yeah. think they love him for his great ability to sacrifice, obviously his mystical gifts, yep. and uh, and his joy. So yep, good. Yeah, everybody follow uh, Ray. He's at Joy of the Faith. Uh, on Twitter, I'm Taylor R. Marshall. Don't forget that second R. It's my middle initial. My middle initial is Reed. Um, the, I just found the book. I'll tweet out the link, but the book I read that I really enjoyed was called, uh, I don't know if other people think it's good, but it's called Padre Pio, Man of Hope. It's by Renzo Allegri. Uh, that's the one I read. So maybe you, can, you guys can look that up. So um, 
Well, that's a good wrap up right there, Ray. Everybody can go and the, the link to the full video that Ray's done on YouTube is below. And also I'll ask the moderators, put it in the, the live chat right now. Uh, go over there and watch the whole thing. It's a lot more thorough than what we've done. Maybe watch that thing tonight on EWTN. And um, Ray, if you find out a book that's better, let me know. We'll tweet it out. All right. On Twitter. Can that's I have the a one I would... Taylor? Yeah, go ahead. So I would ask everyone watching if you could just pray for myself, Angelo, and Austin in making this Eucharistic Miracle video. I think it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's going to be funded through the Christian channel. So if you go to the Christian channel and type in the promo code Jesus, you'll get 10% off. It's like $6 a month. It's, it's trying to replace Netflix in a Catholic oh, way. So good. Okay. They actually stream the Latin Mass every day. So From where? Uh, I don't know if I can say that yet because I don't know if the contract has been finalized. Okay. It's going to go live December 4th. Okay. So, but okay. it's, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And it's cool to think that God put all of us together. And I literally wouldn't be sitting here if Angelo didn't reach out yep. because once he reached out, I said, we need to make a video on Padre Pio. And then yesterday I said, Taylor, let's do a video on Padre Pio. Yeah. So yeah. Padre Pio is uh, inter interceding in a great way. And, and we hope it will bring souls closer to Christ and allow them to see that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. Amen and amen. Great. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, remember, Padre Pio prayed the rosary nonstop. I've been getting some flack on social. Taylor Marshall says, if you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. I'm not saying you're not Catholic. I'm just saying you're not part of the team to reform the church. If we're going to reform the church, we have to be serious about the rosary. Our Lady came down in 1970 and said, everybody needs to pray the rosary every day. So I take I take credit as a word, at a word, right? If Mary yeah. said it, I'm just going to go with it. Oh, yeah. And if Padre you, if you think huge. I'm a crank because I say it, well, I don't care. Exactly. Padre Pio I, said it nonstop, if I understand that. He did. Oh, he said it nonstop. I think uh, the most he ever said in a day was 50. 50 rosaries. I don't even day. know how that there's enough time in a day, but I, I right. guess he could bilocate and do all these things. So, <laughs> you know. He's got like, like, yeah, four hands. I, I don't know. But he, yeah. P Pio says the rosary is the weapon. That's a quote from Pio. So, yes. um, Look, it's not just some guy named Taylor on YouTube saying, pray the rosary every day, you're not a team. It's the Blessed Mother herself, the Theotokos, ever virgin. And it's St. Pio the Wonder Worker, right? If you don't listen to me, listen to them. They're the ones telling you to pray the rosary every day. So pray the rosary every day. Or you're just not on the team of Our Lady of Fatima, and you're definitely not on the team of Padre Pio. Let's be on their team, right, Ray? And, and Taylor, it's, it's really amazing. There have been nights where my wife and I, it's, it's getting late. And we're, we literally say we want to be on the team. You know, that's right. It's, I mean, guys, it's. Well, what do you think it's like for me when it's late and I'm like, I can't, I can't go on YouTube every day and say you're not on the team if I don't actually say uh, it every exactly. day. Exactly. I know. I'd be the biggest hypocrite in the world. I know. It, I mean, it's really prayer is so powerful, right? And mm -hmm. just giving God our time and saying, look, I'm tired right now. This is, you know, a lot's going on, but I'm going to make time for you because you're the most important person in my life. That's right. How do I expect, expect to spend eternity with Jesus if I can't make 15, 20, minutes, 30? Yeah. Preferably like an hour a day in prayer. Right. But if, if you can't do that, uh, just just get your rosary in. And you can break it up in, in different sections right. if you have to. Right. People say it in the car, but That's right. you got to do it. It's you our lady asked us. Every day, every day, folks. Yes. So if you're not doing it, today's the day. Padre Pio Saints Day. You'll always remember on Padre Pio, Pio Saints Day, that's the day I started praying the rosary every day. All right. Well, we're at 28 minutes, so let's pray the Hail Mary in Latin and the Gloria Patri, and we'll sign off. Oremus. In nomine Patris et Fidei et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in molieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Fidei et Spiritus Sancto. Sicut erat in principio, et nunc et seper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Amen. Nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Well, that's the show, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Ray, thanks for being on. And remember, yes. our Lord Jesus Christ said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty and go watch Ray's video. God bless. Godspeed. <laughs>